We now come to the statement on the Post Office. Secretary of State. With your permission, Mr Speaker, I wish to make a statement on post office governance and horizon compensation schemes. Mr Speaker, several serious allegations were made against the government, my department and its officials by Henry Staunton, the former chair of the post office, over the weekend. These allegations are completely false, and I would like to make a statement to the House so that honourable members and the British public know the truth about what, exactly what has happened. I would like to address three specific claims that Mr Staunton made in his Sunday Times interview, claims which are patently untrue. First, Mr Staunton alleges that I refused to apologise to him after he learnt of his dismissal from Sky News. That was not the case. In the call he referenced, I made it abundantly clear that I disapproved of the media breaking any aspect of this story. And out of respect for Henry Staunton's reputation, I went to great pains to make my concerns about his conduct private. In fact, in my interviews with the press, I repeatedly said that I refused to carry out HR in public. That is why it is so disappointing that he's chosen to spread a series of falsehoods, provide made-up anecdotes to journalists, and leak discussions held in confidence. All of this merely confirms in my mind that I made the correct decision in dismissing him. Second, Mr Staunton claimed I told him that someone's got to take the rap for the Horizon scandal, and that was the reason for his dismissal. That was not the reason at all. I dismissed him because there were serious concerns about his behaviour as chair, including those raised from other directors on the board. My department found significant governance issues, for example, with the recruitment of a new senior independence director to the post office board. A public appointment process was underway, but Mr Staunton apparently wanted to bypass it, appointing someone from within the existing board without due process. He failed to properly consult the Post Office Board on the proposal. He failed to hold the required nominations committee. Most importantly, he failed to consult the government as a shareholder, which the company was required to do. I know that honourable members will agree with me that such a cavalier approach to governance was the last thing we needed in the Post Office, given its historic failings. I should also inform the House that while he was in post, a formal investigation was launched into allegations made regarding Mr Staunton's conduct. This included serious matters such as bullying. Concerns were brought to my department's attention about Mr Staunton's willingness to cooperate with that investigation. So it is right that the British public know the facts behind this case and what was said in the phone call where I dismissed Mr Staunton. Officials from my department were on the line. It was minuted and a readout was sent after it took place. Today, I am depositing a copy of that readout in both libraries of the House so the honourable members and the public can see the truth. Personal information relating to other post office employees in those minutes have been redacted. It is for all of these reasons that an interim chair will be appointed shortly, and I will, of course, update the House when we have further details. Finally, Mr Speaker, Mr Staunton claimed that when he was first appointed as chair of the post office, he was told by a senior civil servant to stall on paying compensation. There is no evidence whatsoever that this is true. In fact, on becoming post office chair, Mr Staunton received a letter from the Bay's Permanent Secretary, Sarah Mumby, on the 9th of December 2022. It welcomed him to his role, making it crystal clear that successfully reaching settlements with victims of the post office scandal should be one of his highest priorities. That letter is in the public domain. The words are there in black and white, and copies of the correspondence will be placed in the libraries of both houses. The reality is that my department has done everything it can to speed up compensation payments for victims. We've already made payments totalling £160 million across all three compensation schemes. That includes our announcement last autumn of the optional £600,000 fixed sum award for those who've been wrong wrongfully convicted. It's the strongest refutation, Mr Speaker, of those in this House who would claim that we only acted after the ITV drama, Mr Bates versus the Post Office. British people should know that a dedicated team of ministers and civil servants have been working around the clock for many months to hasten the pursuit of justice and bring swift, fair redress to all those affected. To that end, I am pleased that all 2,417 postmasters who claimed through the original Horizon shortfall scheme have now had offers of compensation, and the Post Office is dealing promptly with late applications and cases where the initial offer has not been accepted. My department has also established the Horizon Compensation Unit to ensure that money gets to the right people without a moment's delay. 
and we announced this autumn an additional £150 million to the post office specifically to help them meet the cost of participating in the post office horizon inquiry and deliver compensation to postmasters. In all, we have committed around £1 billion to ensure wronged postmasters can be fully and fairly compensated. And we are taking unprecedented steps with the forthcoming legislation to quash convictions of postmasters affected by the Horizon scandal. In short, Mr Speaker, we are putting our money where our mouth is and our shoulders to the wheel in ensuring that justice is done. It is not fair on the victims of this scandal, which has already ruined so many lives and livelihoods, to claim, as Mr Thornton has done, that this is being dragged out a second longer than it ought to be. For Henry Stoughton to suggest otherwise, for whatever personal motives, is a disgrace, and it risks damaging confidence in the compensation schemes which ministers and civil servants are working so hard to deliver. I would hope that most people reading the interview in yesterday's Sunday, Sunday Times would see it for what it was, a blatant attempt to seek revenge following dismissal. Mr Speaker, I must say that I regret the way in which these events have unfolded. I did everything, we did everything we could to manage this dismissal in a dignified way for Mr Staunton and others. However, I will not hesitate to defend myself and, more importantly, my officials who cannot respond directly to these baseless attacks. Right now, the Post Office's number one priority must be delivering compensation to postmasters who have not already been compensated. Those that fell victim to a faulty IT system they implemented and which they turned a blind eye to when brave whistleblowers like Alan Bates sounded the alarm. We said that the government would leave no stone unturned in uncovering the truth behind the Horizon scandal in pursuing justice for the victims and their families. We are delivering on that promise while looking for any further possible steps we can take so full and final settlement uh, claims can be reached as quickly as possible. It is right that we reflect too on the cultural practices at the post office which allowed the Horizon scandal to happen in the first place, a culture which let those in the highest ranks of the organisation arbitrarily dismiss the very real concerns of the sub-postmasters who are the lifeblood of their business and pillars of the local community. While the post office may have failed to stand by its postmasters in the past, we are ensuring that they do everything they can to champion them today, fostering an environment that respects their employees and respects their customers. That is how we will rebuild trust and ensure that the British Cup public can have confidence in our post office now and in the future. I commend this statement to the House. Yeah. 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 Secretary of State, Jonathan Reynolds. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I firmly agree that the revelations in the Sunday Times at the weekend could not be more serious. In particular, the claim that the post office was instructed to deliberately go slow on compensation payments to some postmasters in order to push the financial liability into the next parliament, if true, would be a further outrageous insult to a scandal that has already rocked faith in the fairness of the British state. It cannot be allowed to stand if it is the case, and if it is not, it must be shown to be false in no uncertain terms. Yet we do now have two completely contrasting accounts, one from the former chair of the post office and one from the secretary of state, and only one of these accounts can be the truth. And I hope we are all in agreement that Parliament is the correct place for these matters to be raised and clarified, because what we need now is transparency and scrutiny. So can I ask the Secretary of State, will she categorically state that the Post Office was at no point told to delay compensation payments by either an official or a minister from any government department? And at no point was it alluded to that a delay would be of benefit to the Treasury? Will there now be a Cabinet Office investigation to ensure that no such instruction or inference was given at any point. Crucially, is the £1 billion figure of compensation, which the Secretary of State quite helpfully just repeated, already allocated and sat in the Department of Business and Trade's accounts, ready to be paid? If it is not, will we see compensation payments itemised specifically in the upcoming budget? The Secretary of State will also understand that, following the story at the weekend, victims of other scandals, especially contaminated blood, now feel that they need to ask the question as to whether they have been the victims of deliberate inaction. Can the government provide assurances that no such obstruction has been placed on any payments of that kind? And if so, what is the delay with some of these cases? And in the full interests of transparency and to fully ascertain the veracity of any allegations for sub-postmasters and the general public, will she publish all relevant correspondence and minutes of meetings between the Department, the Treasury, UKGI, and the post office during this time. 
And finally, when can we expect the legislation on exonerations that was promised by the Prime Minister? I cannot stress enough how the last thing that was needed in this scandal was any further allegations of cover-ups or obfuscation at the very top of government. People's faith in government, already damaged from scandals like Hillsborough and Bloody Sunday and Windrush, is hanging by a thread. And this miscarriage of justice has shown the devastation that can occur when institutions are allowed to operate without oversight or are shrouded by secrecy. So we should all agree that that secrecy must end and the full sunlight of public scrutiny brought to bear. And if everything the Secretary of State has told us today is correct, surely there will be no objection to that happening in full. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I would like to very much uh, welcome the tone that the shadow French Ben spokesman has taken on this. I know that there are often uh, tendencies for political point scoring, but I think we both agree that this is very much about the postmasters. And that is why I made sure that I was at this dispatch box so the people would know the truth. That is what builds, um, that is what builds trust. So he asked if I would categorically state that no uh, instruction was given to, uh, delay, to delay payments. Yes, I can. We have no evidence whatsoever uh, that any official said this. And actually, if, there, if, if su su such a thing was said, it is for Mr. Staunton himself to bring the evidence. It's yeah. very hard to refute a negative. People just making wild, baseless accusations and then demanding proof that they didn't happen um, are mischief-making in, uh, in my view. So as far as I have seen, and all the evidence points to the fact that no one made this claim. But also, I think it's important to look at whether it would even make sense to do so. There would be no benefit whatsoever of us delaying compensation. Absolutely. This does not have any significant impact on revenues whatsoever. It would be a mad thing to even suggest. And the compensation scheme, uh, which uh, Mr Staunton oversaw, has actually been completed. My understanding is that 100% of payments have been made, so clearly no instruction was given. And he mentions the infected blood inquiry. I think that this is a good example of how people lose faith in the system because of misinformation that is put out there, and that is why I am here to uh, correct the record. He asked about the billion pounds uh, allocation. We give monthly reports that show exactly what payments are being made. And um, he also asked about whether we would be publishing correspondence. Uh, no, we will not be publishing in full all correspondence between departments and uh, UKGI and the post office. That is because we set up the statutory inquiry that will examine those important issues relating to the Horizon scandal and examine current governance arrangements. So we are fully cooperating with the inquiry, but the inquiry is, was set up specifically to look at that by Parliament. Um, and in addition to the readout of the true content of my telephone call with Mr Staunton, we will uh, consider publishing correspondence between departments and Mr Staunton in accordance with freedom of information rules so that uh, people will know exactly what happened uh, contrary to the account that he has given. He asked about legislation. That is something we are actively working on, and I am expecting uh, that we will be able to do this imminently. Paul Scully. Thank you, Mr Speaker. When I was Postal Affairs Minister, the officials in my team didn't just share my drive to, uh, to get the money out of the door, the life-changing money for postmasters, but they actually were energised themselves, empowered to be able to do so. I cannot believe for a minute that just a few months later they would be doing and thinking the polar opposite, and they clearly cannot defend themselves in public. So can my right hon. Friend confirm that these conversations did not happen about colluding to slow down the conversation, and it's really important that we double down and make sure we do get more money out of the door as soon as possible. Um, uh, first of all, I want to pay tribute to my right hon. Friend for all the fantastic he uh, did as Postal Affairs Minister, and I can confirm that. My officials have looked through all of the correspondence, all of the minutes in the conversations that Mr. Sorton has had with the department. They have found absolutely nothing. And in the call that he had with me, he did not raise this. If this was something that officials had said to him, surely he would have mentioned it to ministers, either myself or the Postal Affairs Minister. The fact that he did not do so shows that this is quite likely something that he is making up. SNP spokesperson, Marion Fellows. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm at a loss today, another Monday, another post office scandal, and I don't, really, I, I, I've tried very hard to pull together my thoughts on what the statement says, what's been said in the Times, and what has also been said in this place only less than two weeks ago when I did a, a backbench business committee debate on culture and of post office management. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'd like to ask uh, the Secretary of State uh, a couple of, well, a few questions. Um, Secretary of State, can you place on the record whether or not Nick Reid wrote to the Justice Secretary last month defending uh, these convictions, saying that some of them were guilty? That's a really serious allegation, and I'd really like to have an answer. Will you also... Um, um, wait, sorry. Sorry. Um, sorry, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'm waiting to see something coming through the door. I beg your pardon. Right. So, now... There's been talk all morning about uh, damaging confidence in the, uh, the compensation schemes. If there is confidence in the compensation schemes, can the Secretary of State explain to me why so many leading sub-postmasters who were affected by this scandal were given such derisory offers yeah. months and months and months late? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just not on. So you can't say that Henry Staunton damaged the, 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 the compensation schemes. That's government. That's Post Office Limited. Is the Secretary of State aware that there are still 40 employees who were, are still employed by Post Office Limited who were investigators who raised convictions? Madam Deputy Speaker, I know I haven't got much longer. Exoneration must be speeded up, and I agree with what the Honourable Gentleman, the Member of the Opposition, said. Exoneration must be hurried up. Compensation must be paid sooner rather than later. And I've said that every month, I think, for the last nine months. Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, the Honourable Lady asks multiple questions. The first one uh, about a letter written by Nick Reed, the Post Office Chief Executive, to the Justice Secretary. Um, so what I can say is that UKGI and Post Office Limited have both vehemently denied that uh, Nick Reed was put under any pressure to write the letter that he is referring to. Um, and in terms of the risks about making a decision on blanket exoneration, uh, the Postal Affairs Minister has said uh, repeatedly that we have been faced with a dilemma, either accept the present problem of many people carrying the unjustified slur of conviction or accept that an unknown number of people who have genuinely stolen from their post office will be exonerated and perhaps even uh, compensated. So that is the case. That is certainly what the government believes. What she is saying about people being put under pressure to write uh, a letter, that is something that UKGI and Post Office Limited have both vehemently denied. Um, the Honourable Lady continues to uh, act as if, or certainly repeats the uh, allegations that Mr Staunton has made. I have already given a statement that they are completely false. And uh, she asks about the uh, about individual cases of people who have been paid. I cannot comment on individual cases, but um, I would like to clarify that the main scheme that was in place under Henry Staunton's watch was the Horizon Shortfall Scheme. 2,417 cases uh, were made offers within the original deadline. So 100% had received offers, but 84% had accepted offers. I just want to clarify my previous, um, my previous comments. And in terms of the 40, uh, the 40 uh, prosecutors still working at the post office, that is something where I, I, I as Secretary of State, have had multiple people giving different uh, bits of information. That is something that the inquiry is looking at, and they will get to the bottom of it. So John Redwood. Will she review the governance of UKGI? How did they manage to preside over the post office with the dreadful treatment of the sub-postmasters? How did they allow the senior managers uh, of the post office to rack up and accumulate losses of £1,390 million, effectively bankrupting the post office so that it can now only trade if it has the reassurance of massive cash infusions from the Treasury on a continuing base. Surely this body has done very badly and we need a better answer. My, uh, my right honourable friend for his question. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we have been making personnel changes in this area. But uh, I think it goes back to the point which I was making in the statement, that the post office needs an effective chair. I did not have, until the day I had the conversation with him uh, dismissing him, I never had any correspondence from Mr Staunton about difficulties that he was having with UKGI. If he was having them, he should have told me, rather than give an interview to the Sunday Times, effectively stating that he had no control over the organisation which he'd been appointed to run. Kevin Jones. Speaker, the Secretary of State says that Henry Stoughton's accusations are completely false, therefore we've got to accept that. Um, the issue around the 
uh, letter that Nick Reid wrote to uh, the Chancellor, uh, the, uh, the uh, Lord Chancellor, uh, about overdue conviction, mentioned the issue about 300 people possibly are going to be, in quote, guilty. Now, she just told the House that those people, sorry, that uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, investment uh, body uh, didn't instruct him to do that. Well, Henry Thornton said, Staunton said he didn't tell them to write that. The board didn't know about it. So who did? Uh, and can I ask that in the uh, openness and transparency that she should produce all of the correspondence between uh, UK uh, investments and the post office? And can I just say to her, she's accused Henry Staunton of lying uh, in public. Well, the only reason we can actually judge that she is telling the truth is if we actually have all the information out there. And can I just say to also, from her uh, obsession with tweeting, when she says people are jumping on the bandwagon on this, some of us have been involved in this for many years, on a cross-party basis, yeah, yeah. working with people yeah, yeah. like her colleague, the member for uh, Malton, and uh, for, for, um, for Malton. And can I just say, that's quite insulting. But what her tone today will send to the sub-postmasters, I'll say this, it's more cover-up, more ossification. So get it out there, explain what's going on and give the information. Otherwise, you will not have the trust. It's just more of the same we've seen over many, many years. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I completely reject the assertions that the Honourable Gentleman has made. And this is the political point scoring which I talked about earlier, which we, need to, which, which we just need to stop. He is in, rather than focus on the issue, he's talking about my tweeting. Um, I think maybe he should get off Twitter and actually listen to what I'm saying um, at the dispatch box. He's talking about, he is talking about uh, a letter which UKGI have said that they did not ask uh, uh, Nick Reed to write. So I think the question that he's, uh, the, the only possible answer is that Nick Reed himself decided to write that letter. I, I, I didn't ask him to write it. Post office say they didn't. UKGI didn't. And this is what, these are the sorts of things, just trying to continue to make aspersions on ministers. We have made the post office an independent body. We have an independent inquiry and the information will come out in due course. Sir Conor Burns. Speaker, there is no doubt that there was a bad culture in the post office for a very long time. They misled a significant number of ministers who, to put it yeah, gently, yeah. could have been yeah, yeah. more inquiring over the years. Can my right honourable friend tell us if she's had time to reflect on the words of the non-executive members of the board representing the postmasters who say that only days before she sacked the chairman that there was still a culture that they were guilty and that they were on the take. And if that sacking has brought the compensation to those people who were traumatised and misled by the post office, who had their lives destroyed, her decision will go down as being a very, very welcome one. Um, I thank my right honourable friend uh, for that question, and of course I am, I am going to agree with him, but I think it is very interesting the comments that were made by the two uh, members of the board who were former post, uh, postmasters. They are saying exactly what I am saying, that Henry Saunton was not doing a good job as post office chair, which leads me back to the point made by uh, the honourable gentleman in his previous question. He is more interested in attacking the government than looking at what even the members of the board are saying. It is important that we continue to give confidence to people that these organisations are run properly, and that was the reason for the dismissal. Alistair Carmichael. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Whatever the reason for it, I can tell the Secretary of State having supported constituents in negotiation in relation to the historic shortfall scheme, that the conduct of the post office and of their agents in that was one which was characterised by delay and obstruction. That in turn led to a view taking hold among sub-postmasters that there was no point in making claims. Since the ITV drama was aired, I have heard of a number of constituents in my own area that have made claims belatedly. So what more is the government doing to ensure that everybody who is out there who may have a claim is actually going to be able to receive it? Uh, 
Uh, I thank the honourable gentleman for his question. It is a good one. I think the fixed sum awards are showing that this is a matter that we are taking very seriously. I became business secretary in February of last year, and my one priority was to make sure that people got their compensation as quickly as possible. I did yeah. everything that I possibly could with uh, the post office minister, the member for Thurston and Moulton, who I really want to take uh, the opportunity to thank for his tireless efforts. Yeah. He had been uh, looking at the portfolio before I got the job as business secretary, and I knew that uh, the work was in safe hands. We've worked together as a team. We have fought uh, cross department mentally to make sure that people got the compensation that they deserve. We brought legislation in uh, just before uh, December, well before the ITV drama. But the cases that he raises are really important to show that there's still a lot of work to do and we will continue doing that. Duncan Baker. Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, given the Post Office's track record with accuracy, I'm very glad that we have had the Secretary of State. I'd rather take her assurances at the dispatch box than anything from a former disgruntled uh, sacked uh, employee of the post office. Uh, I, during this recess, I even had constituents coming to me still saying that they were affected by the Horizon scandal. So can you assure people that are watching out there, it is a very quick and simple process that people that still feel they lost money in that horrendous period do keep coming forward because there is a process that is easy to be able to fill in a form to make sure your voice is heard and you get that compensation. Um, uh, my honourable friend is quite right, um, and I want to thank him uh, for raising this and also for the work he did. I know that he was a former post of, uh, postmaster, so he knows quite a lot about uh, what has been going on. And uh, I do want to reassure uh, all of the people who have been affected by this scandal. This is something that we are taking very seriously. I was absolutely horrified when I became business secretary to see the, the sheer scale of trauma that people have been going through. We want people to continue coming forward, and where they're not happy with the process, we will look again. But there is a formal process that is in place that makes sure that all the postmasters can be treated fairly, uh, equally and equitably. Uh, Dame Diana Johnson. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, the allegations of limping towards the general election in terms of delaying um, compensation payments to postmasters does actually mirror the behaviour of government towards the infected blood scandal. Yeah. The government have had the final recommendations on that compensation since April 2023 with no action. So it seems to me that there is a pattern of behaviour. The government only seem to act when forced to or shamed to into taking any action and it's clear with the infected blood scandal we've been told uh, repeatedly by ministers that the government is working at pace so actually what that really means is they're limping at pace aren't they uh, no no and no and i think it's a shame that the honourable lady would stand up there and say that the government only acted when it was forced to when she knows that we brought legislation to this house well before the ITV drama she knows about the uh, horizon shortfall scheme she knows about the glo payments she knows about the overturned convictions and the fact the fact that she is trying to mix this up with the infected blood uh, uh, inquiry, knowing, knowing that I have just proved that the allegations made by Minister Staunton are completely false, I have said that minutes will be put on the record show that this is not an issue which they want to look at beyond political point scoring. And I will not stand at this dispatch box and allow that to happen. Sarah Dines. Madam Deputy Speaker, leaks at the weekend to newspapers appear to show really poor embedded practices at the Post Office Board, using language about our postmasters as being on the take or guilty. What is my right honourable friend doing to clean up the act? Clean up the act. act. Uh, my honourable friend raises a very good point. This is why we need effective leadership at the post office. This is why I took the decision that I did to dismiss Mr Staunton, uh, amongst, other, uh, amongst the other allegations which, um, or rather the other issues which I've uh, put into this, uh, into this statement. We need people who care. And one of the problems, uh, that one of the things that worries me is that because Mr Staunton has decided to have a revenge in the papers, it's going to make it even harder for us to find people who will come in and do this very, very difficult job. And I hope that they will not be put off by the misinformation that has been in the papers. Andrew Bridgen. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I thank the Secretary of State for her prompt statement and her laying out her version of events around the dismissal of Mr Staunton, the Post Office Chairman. And 
we have to accept her statements from the dispatch board. But I have to take uh, exception to one point she's made. She said there was no evidence of stalling of compensation. But that evidence comes from the experience of my own constituents, Mr and Mrs Rudkin, whose evidence to, uh, to, to me was actually fundamental in unravelling this whole post office horizon scandal. Susan Rudkin's criminal conviction was overturned in the, one of the first nine in December 2020. When I spoke to Mr and Mrs Rudkin only a few weeks ago, they still have not received their compensation over three years after that criminal conviction was overturned. If that's not evidence of stalling, Madam Deputy Speaker, what is? Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, what I would say is that I can't comment uh, because I don't have the details on that specific case, but a fixed sum award is available should they wish to take it. There is a process. We will move as quickly as he can. I can't speak specifically about why that delay is there, but we're doing everything we can to get the money out to the postmasters as quickly as possible. Richard Trax. Madam Deputy Speaker, I have a once proud former postmaster in my constituency who ran the post office in Swanage. He fell foul of this scandal and was sacked not prosecuted. His life was utterly ruined and he repaid the money that he was owed. That was many, many years ago. His wife is now very, very ill. He still has not had compensation. May I make two points? One, his lawyer tells me the compensation scheme is taking too long. And secondly, because he wasn't prosecuted, can I uh, ask for the front bench's assurance that he won't be brushed off financially simply because he wasn't prosecuted? This man's life and his wife, his, their lives have been utterly ruined. Uh, I thank my honourable uh, friend for, for that question. I, I know exactly the sort of people he will be talking about, and it is really uh, awful to hear everything that they have been through. I myself have a constituent who I've spoken to who's talked about how this scandal ruined her life. We owe it to them to do everything we can to make sure that they are fully compensated. I can assure him that ministers and officials are working every day. I know it isn't always as quick as people would like, but we want to make sure that it is done properly and that there are no issues uh, following that. I don't have the specific details of that case, but they can apply to the Horizon Shortfall Scheme, and if he brings it to the Postal Affairs Minister, we will look at it um, specifically. Kate Osborne. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Ministers have promised that the government will bring in a new law and to swiftly exonerate and compensate victims. So can the Secretary of State tell me why my constituent, Chris Head, has only been offered 13% of his compensation claim? How can sub-postmasters trust the government or the post office to deliver full and fair compensation when they're still facing so much pushback on their compensation claims and receiving offers that go nowhere near financial restoration, let alone compensation for the injustice. And if I can just quickly add, Madam Deputy Speaker, the suggestion by the Secretary of State that the government would have acted in the same way had the ITV drama not been shown is completely unbelieved or unbelievable by most, and none more so than the sub-postmasters themselves. Yeah. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, the fact that in December we had brought legislation to the House Empty benches, all uh, opposite when that legislation uh, was brought through. Empty benches, they are the ones who have decided to take a more keen interest after the drama. We have been working flat out. I do not have the specific details of her constituent, as she knows, but I will continue to repeat what I have said, that where there are people who have not received uh, compensation, we can look at it. There is a process. There is also an independent panel that they can appeal to, but the vast majority of people who have been getting offers are taking them. Brendan Clark Smith. Deputy Speaker, too often Quango bosses are rewarded for failure and able to walk away with big payouts. And it would be a disgrace for the man who has done so little to get compensation for postmasters to get any himself. So could the Secretary of State confirm that she will block any such payments? There will be no payments to Henry Staunton. Sammy Wilson. The public squabble at the weekend. I think further undermines the confidence which people have in uh, what's going to happen and the government's uh, assurances to, uh, to compensate the post office uh, 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 um, uh, people who are affected. Um, I, I tend to believe the, the view of the minister 
simply because the record of post office officials of cover up and of passing the buck and of trying to cause confusion has is on record we know what they're, they're, they're doing but the fact remains there are still people who have not had any offer of compensation yeah. there's still a billion pounds which has not been spent and in giving compensation there are still people who haven't um, even had their cases considered is the best way of answering Henry Staunton not for the government to get on with the job and to make sure that compensation is paid quickly and that people uh, uh, get the compensation they deserve. Yes, the honourable gentleman is quite right. And 64%, uh, the, the number I gave earlier, 64% of people have received. We know that we want to get it to 100% as quickly as possible, but we want to make sure that people get the right amount, they're compensated fairly. And that's why we have the process, including uh, a point of appeal if they're unhappy with the offer. But the point he made right at the beginning of his question is correct that people do uh, find, th th this does undermine, this, the, uh, the, the points made in the newspapers do undermine what the work that we are doing. It was very disappointing to read those statements. It was also disappointing because I'd done everything I could to try and keep this out of the news uh, and do, do it uh, behind closed doors properly. I made sure when I gave minister, uh, you know, public statements that I said I wouldn't do HR in public. I even, when I found out they had been leaked to Sky News, called Sky News and asked them, my, one of my uh, assistants did, to ask them not to put that out in public domain before I had a chance to speak to Henry Staunton. Did the same with the Daily Mail, who thankfully did listen. But we also need the media to help us in this and not publish false allegations. Lee Anderson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Nalan, I am absolutely staggered that the Labour Party now seems to be coming out in support of the disgraced post office management team. <laughs> this, by the way, this, by the way, Madam Deputy Speaker, is the same management team that oversaw the wrongful uh, imprisonment of, of, of constituents and postmasters across the country, hundreds of convictions. So, does my right honourable friend agree with me that when, when push comes to shove, that that lot over there would take the side of the grifters, not the grafters? Um, I thank my honourable friend for his question. And uh, this is one of the reasons, as he said, that, uh, where the post office leadership had uh, overseen the wrongful convictions. We have had multiple changes, and this is just the latest to ensure that we get the right, uh, the right leadership in place. But as we can see, I know that some of, the, uh, some of the members opposite are dealing with this properly. But from the heckling, we can see that for a lot of them, they came here thinking that they could get political points scored, and I am not allowing that to happen. So Chris Bryant. A, a, a lot of members are, of course, um, angry and impatient about trying to get compensation and exoneration for all the postmasters mm -hmm. as soon as possible. And if we're all honest, as Parliament, we should have been much more impatient much earlier as a whole. And there are some, some rare exceptions, including the, my honourable friend who's spoken earlier and, and obviously members on the other side of the House as well. Um, but can I just clarify something about the process of his dismissal? Um, as I understand it, um, he, he found out about it from Sky News. I think the Secretary of State just added a piece of information, which is that she then rang Sky News before ringing him, I think, to try and get them to stop running it. So she knew that this had already been leaked to Sky News from somebody in her department, presumably. Um, what, what investigation did she go through to find out who that was um, that leaked it? Has that, is that person still in post? Um, because otherwise, one might just worry that it might have been she herself who leaked it. Um, I, I, knew, I, knew that someone, I knew that someone would, uh, would ask that question. I have, in fact, evidence to show that I asked Sky News not to run the story. Of course I didn't leak it, because if I had, it would have created, it would have created legal risk if he found out on the news before, if he found out on the news before I had had a chance, to, uh, a chance to speak to him. We have no idea how Sky News found out the information. There are several thousand people who work at the Department for Business and Trade. There are many more who work at the post office at UKGI. The Honourable Member is heckling. But the point I am making is that leaks are incredibly damaging and harmful. They create legal risk for the department. I did not do so. I made multiple efforts with at least two media uh, outlets to make sure that they did not create problems for Mr Staunton. And it is one of the reasons why it is very disappointing to see what he did in the Sunday Times at the weekend. 
Debbie Abrams. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. To be honest, I, I'm afraid I don't think the Business Secretary uh, and her statement has, has helped us to get closer to what the, uh, the, the truth is in this uh, situation. It is a question of the Secretary of State's um, version of events and the former Chairman's version of events. So, would um, for clarity um, and to try and draw a line under this and to get to the truth, would the Secretary of State be willing to refer herself to the Ethics Advisor? I think that that is a ridiculous assertion from someone who clearly was not listening to the statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The difference between what I'm saying and what Mr Staunton is saying is that I have officials who will back me up. I have members of the, advisory of, uh, of the post office board who will back me up. I have uh, newspaper uh, and media uh, outlets who will know that I try to stop the story. The fact is, she just wants to believe Mr Staunton's allegations yeah, because yeah, yeah. that helps them politically, but they are not true. They need to listen to the truth and stop hoping for lies. That is not what our job is in this House. Uh, Clive De Deputy Speaker, if Henry Staunton is uh, guilty of what the Secretary of State has accused him of, it does beg his belief that he was only appointed two years ago by yes. this government. But, but uh, can I ask her about post office investigations? Because I've got yet another constituent who's come forward who's forced to sign a non disclosure agreement by the post office who hasn't been fully compensated for what they lost when they lost their business. Is it, is it acceptable for the post office to be involved with investigations still? given how discredited they are. How can the victims of this scandal have any confidence in the process that the post office is involved with in any way whatsoever? Uh, I think that the way that we have been dealing with this issue at the dispatch box, the work that the inquiry is, ca uh, is carrying out, and our commitment to look at individual cases and make sure that the process is working out properly is how uh, the postmasters will have confidence in the system. Uh, ben Lake. In recent weeks, I've met with a number of constituents, former uh, postmasters, who have explained the terrible impact this scandal has had on their lives. Although they weren't actually convicted by the post office, they did have to pay large sums of money to pay for shortfalls that, quite frankly, didn't exist. Um, I'd be very grateful if the Secretary of State could confirm that it is the government's expectation that they are not only compensated for the money that they paid, but also for the financial and personal harm that this scandal caused their lives. This is definitely what we're trying to do. No one should be in a worse position than they were before this scandal happened. And where we can provide additional compensation, we will be able to do so. And that's what the process is set out to do. So, Creasy. Thank you, Madam Deputy Sticker. I mean, I think many of us would be concerned about the department that oversees employment rights being one where thousands of people know somebody's about to be sacked before they do. <laughs> but we would agree with the Secretary of State when she says this is really about giving the public confidence that when wrongs come to light, they will be righted. And the challenge that she faces here is the track record of recent decades is not good. It's not just about the Horizon scandal, it's about the nuclear veterans, Windrush, the Waspy women, the infected blood scandal, Grenfell. Time and time again, it's the compensation schemes themselves that become the story and a source of injustice. So rather than taking to Twitter, isn't the right rejoinder on this to become the first Secretary of State to say, actually, we should put out to an independent body management of compensation schemes involving government so that everybody could have confidence? I'm sure she would find support on this bench for that. Uh, first of all, I haven't said that thousands of people knew that Henry Staunton was being sacked. I said there are thousands of people who work in the department, and it could have been anybody who put that out there. Again, it's really important that we stick to what is, uh, what's been said on the record. She mentions that these are scandals that have been going over decades. I would like to remind her that the Horizon scandal happened and started under a Labour government. It is this government that is beginning to fix it. Uh, Barbara Keeley. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I want to raise with the Secretary of State the shortcomings of the Horizon Shortfall Scheme. My constituent, Mr Pennington, was a sub-postmaster for 20 years, and he has raised issues about those shortcomings after he went through 10 years of financial distress, paying back shortfall amounts demanded by the errors generated by the Horizon system. The poorly designed Horizon Shortfall Scheme has paid back only part of the shortfall, which is possibly £100,000, has only paid back part of that, and only a paltry £1,500 for 10 years of financial stress and worry. 
I wrote to the Minister responsible four weeks ago and I haven't had a response. When will the shortcomings of this scheme, the Horizon scheme, be reviewed so that sub-postmasters like Mr Pennington receive full, not part, compensation for all those years of distress? Uh, Ms. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, the Honourable Lady has rights to raise that. We are aware of this problem. Uh, this is something that we are working with the advisory board to see how we can fix and make sure people get proper compensation. And um, I've just been told by the uh, Post, uh, Postal Affairs Minister that the letter which she's expecting should be with her shortly. Florence Hashalomi. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I thank the Secretary of State for her statement. Um, she will be aware that many post office branches have closed in recent years including the Clapham Common Post Office in my constituency, which is due to close on the 6th of March. In her statement, the Secretary of State said that right now the post office's number one priority is delivering compensation to the postmasters. Does she agree with me that millions of pounds spent on the post office trying to pay the submasters, innocent submasters, should have been better spent on actually making sure we keep our vital post offices up and down the country? I would like to thank the Honourable Lady for her tireless work uh, campaigning to save the uh, Clapham Post Office. I know she's had many meetings with the Postal Affairs Minister. I think that we should be able to do both. We should be able to keep post offices uh, open as well as compensate. Ferry. Uh, thank you. As this is a genuine national scandal, it is important that sub-postmasters with criminal convictions in terms of exoneration are treated equally with a shared, speedy, uh, common approach across uh, the UK. Uh, both I and the recently reappointed Justice Minister in Northern Ireland have written to ministers asking for Northern Ireland to be included in forthcoming legislation. However, I understand that the government is currently not minded to do so in terms of the devolved administrations. Uh, can I ask uh, the, the Secretary of State to, to confirm that Northern Ireland will be part of that, that legislation, which, which hopefully will be brought forward soon. Um, uh, Beyond, I thank the Honourable General for his question. He will know that uh, Stormont is now up and running, and there are conversations which we will be having with devolved governments on the best way to resolve this. We don't have an answer now, but we are aware of this issue and we're working on it. Jones. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The reports on the weekend were extremely uh, alarming, given the way that the postmasters have been treated in recent years. The obvious question, though, is. Could the, the Secretary of State give any assurance or guarantee that, that the compensation will be repaid and that those, uh, the, the um, compensation taken forward before the general election is called? That surely is the very basic that sub postmasters would ask uh, and the very least that they deserve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's absolutely the right thing to do, and I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his question because it gives me another opportunity to just to restate that the very idea that compensation would be delayed till after the election is a complete nonsense. It doesn't even make political sense. We want to make sure people get their money as quickly as possible. Jim Shannon. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Secretary of State very much for our, our very uh, positive answers? Uh, the Secretary said, across the United Kingdom, Great Britain and Northern Ireland, there are hundreds of postmasters and postmistresses are still waiting compensation for these wrongdoings. Whilst it is understood that this is a very sensitive subject for money, can the Secretary of State provide an update to the timescale or just when the Secretary of State expects everyone entitled to be compensated? especially for all constituents across the United Kingdom, Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The fact of the matter is, some people have waited two years, three years and longer. It just really can't go on. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, the honourable member is, uh, gentleman is right. It can't go on. I want to see everyone get their money as quickly as possible. Uh, by the end of this year, everybody should have received their funding. That's certainly what I'm working towards. I thank the uh, Secretary of State for her statement. And we now come to... I'll just let the personnel change.